Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mirror Neuron, which means watch and learn. And we are going to continue with our discussion on logistic regression. And today we are going to mainly focus on the solution of the loss function that is required for the logistic model. So we are also going to look into the Bernoulli distribution and how we can translate our linear model into a logistic model. We'll describe the loss function and then we will in our subsequent videos we'll also see how to solve that loss function in the case of logistic regression. So let's get started. So first we'll begin with the Bernoulli distribution. So what does Bernoulli distribution say that uh, say for example I have a output variable which can take say two values either it's a zero or it's a one. So Bernoulli distribution basically gives you the discrete probability so what is the probability of getting a 0 versus what is the probability of getting a 1? So which looks very similar to the problem that we are currently trying to solve using logistic regression. We are basically trying to classify something. And here we have a binary classification. That means we have only two different types of output value. So they are 0 and 1 which could represent the 0 could represent basically a spam or false about something or you know we should sell our stock options or it's a picture of a cat or it's a failure about something and the one could just represent the opposite of it so it's a not a spam in the case of an email classification it's true about something so we should buy uh, more stocks and the picture of uh, that we are seeing right now says of a dog and it's a successful event in other cases so this could be the different binary classification that we can solve so if i say the probability of certain thing happening is given by p for which n is equal to 1 in this case you can see so the 1 minus p should be the other case so for example if a certain email is a spam then i would say it's a probability of 0 and if it is not a spam then it's a case of 1 you can you can inverse the relationship as well it doesn't matter okay as long as we are consistent so according to the Bernoulli distribution so probability of happening something and the probability of not happening something is independent of each other so that's why we can give the joint probability as p to the power n here n is the uh, probability of happening as zero or the uh, probability of getting a one right so p to the power n multiplied by one minus p to the power one minus n n is the value that we are getting either it's a zero or it's a one and p gives the probability of getting a zero or a one so you can say in this case we are considering if p uh, the probability of getting a one is given by p and the probability of not getting a one that means the probability of getting zero is basically one minus p okay so in our last lecture we have seen that uh, you know if we have a data where the output values can only take zero or one we can try to fit a linear model but then it will be a very bad fit right so what we need to do is rather we need to convert this linear model somehow so that it instead of taking all these values within minus infinity to plus infinity rather it should give me something between 0 and 1 which is our re logistic regression right so what we rather want is a kind of a function which will convert this linear model into logistic model so if you, as you can see in the graph in the right hand side my linear model is given by y is equal to b naught plus b1 x so don't worry about this uh, naming convention it is nothing but in our examples is m naught plus m1 x in some cases you will see beta naught plus beta 1 x and so on so these are basically the coefficient of that straight line and x is your feature variable here and in case of and in case of converting this linear model to a logistic model we use something called a sigmoid function and sigmoid function is basically given by one if x is the variable so it will be one over one plus e to the power minus x okay so as you can see in the logistic model here right so you can see that p is given by or the basically we need to convert that into a probability and that is done by this sigmoid function okay so instead of having the linear models outcome we are trying to calculate a probability which is nothing but something within 0 and 1 so from the OLS math method in order to calculate the output or in order to predict the output value what we do is we multiply the coefficient vectors with our data matrix 
and in order to get the probability we have to input this x dot m within a function here the function is our sigmoid function and the sigmoid function says that it will generate something between 0 and 1 if we use this expression 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus x dot m okay very simple so basically we have a linear values which can go from minus infinity to plus infinity so if we enter that values within this function which is the sigmoid function it will output something between 0 and 1 which is basically will be doing a classification activity for us all right so for the entire data set we have used for the y predicted something as the data matrix dot our coefficient vector right and the probability of then would be given by the sigmoid function so whatever outcome we get just run it through the sigmoid function so similarly for a single individual record what we can do is uh, it can be written as instead of writing the data matrix x we can just take that row vector for that particular feature multiplied by the coefficient vector so similarly we will pass through the sigmoid function 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus x i in this case i being the uh, count keeping the count of all the records that you have in your data set dot m all right so these values y i prad can have values either 0 or 1 based on this uh, sigmoid function instead of the actual outcome which is x i dot m so if it was a linear model then we would have been very happy to use the x i dot m but because we are doing a logistic regression so we run this value through the sigmoid function so that it can give us an output between 0 and 1 all right so now that we know a technique to convert our linear model to fit the data to a logistic model to do the classification what we can have to next do is try to find the maximum likelihood estimate for this sigma or this sigmoid function so the loss function is given by uh, in this case for an individual record is what is the probability of getting a value yi given some input vector xi and so similarly for the entire data set what we are going to do is uh, calculate the probability in case of each and every record that we have okay so let's look into a proper diagram so that it becomes more clear to you and let's focus more into the maximum likelihood estimate okay so whatever we have explained so far let's see what actually it will behave when you have some data set right so for example let's consider this record here so here we want to know what is the probability and this is my yi in this case and this is my xi right for each and every record or my feature vector so what i want to know is for this first record for this first record what i want to know is what is the probability of getting my y predicted value is equal to yi so in this case my yi is 0 so i want i would like to know what is the probability of getting 0 given my xi so in this case xi is 100 so that is all my intention here right now interestingly this is for my first record now the second record here oops, sorry let me choose a color here okay so my second record here will also have a very similar probability so what is the probability of getting so in this case i will say this is my record zero which is my first record so i'll have the first record and what is the probability given my first record and i can keep doing this and calculating this probability in each and every case now all right what is the probability that it will be y1 right given some vector 120 for the stock price now this will continue so basically because these are all independent probabilities so what i can do is i can write my loss function as the product of all this probability and the product is given by this odd shaped like a bridge kind of thing and this is the product of and it will go from all the way from record first to my nth record and what it will basically calculate is my probability in each and every case probability of getting a certain yi given a certain xi so xi is basically here whatever the number of records are 
right in this case probably there are 10 records so i basically will go from 1 to 10 okay so i'm calculating the probability in each and every case and how do i calculate my probability so the probability is calculated using my sigmoid function right and which is nothing but 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus right, the model which is b naught plus b1 x so this will give me probability within 0 and 1 okay so now that i know this is my technique that has to be used what i can tell is uh, and also we have to keep in mind that this is for binary classification so basically we have output as 0 and 1 okay so now that we know our calculation is based on 0 and 1 what we can do is we can now recall that at the very beginning of this lecture we started with something as Bernoulli distribution so here also we know that my output values are either 0 or 1 and we have also said that the probability of getting 1 is given by p then the probability of not getting 1 will be given by 1 minus p so the same expression the same loss function then can be written as in Bernoulli distribution terms i is equal to 1 so I can simply write this as p to the power of y i times 1 minus p to the power 1 minus y i now what does it say what does this relation say so it says that if my prediction y i is correct if it is 0 in the case of first record okay so in that case my this expression will become 1 right times it will become 1 minus p to the power 1 so which is correct so my probability of getting a 0 is nothing but 1 minus p which is my correct estimate right the loss function is meant to correct your model so in this case I have guessed it right again if in now let's consider this case where my y i is equal to 1 and if I compare it here so this term will go 0 this will become 0 in case of y i is equal to 1 and what I will get here is p to the power 1 which is your probability p which is again a very correct estimate because probability of getting 1 should be represented by p and that's what I got from my data set as well so that means this can be treated well for my as a loss function for my logistic regression okay so now here is one challenge if we have a huge data set then calculating this probability and the product of this probability is actually computationally expensive so what we will do is we will take the log of this loss function because here we are talking about once we take the log what will happen is it will become more like a summation because we know that the you know the if we take the log of a product it becomes the summation of those logs right so this if we take a log of this function it will become log of l which is the loss function and instead of product now it will become a summation so basically your i to 1 to n and this will become y i log of probability p plus so that's the beauty of logarithmic function 1 minus y i and this is just high school mathematics log of 1 minus p so basically your product of the probabilities became now the summation of the log of the probabilities so basically we have converted the calculation technique and hence it is actually faster now that because i have taken the log of my loss function so you must have seen this is also called as log likelihood loss function so now i hope it has become easy for you to understand why is it called as log likelihood loss function okay now my main intention is to maximize this function okay and we already know the probability p here so p is basically my predicting the output value which is nothing but passing the dot product of my xi dot m for the individual record so i already know how to calculate the probability of my output or predicted value so if i put this expression in my log equation so 
so which is given by so log of l will be nothing but the summation from i to n okay so y i will remain as is so instead of the log of p right i will write here as the log of my sigma function sigma of x i dot m plus my 1 minus y i will remain the same and this will be given by log of 1 minus instead of 1 minus p I'm writing 1 minus sigma of x i times m okay very interesting so what I have done is instead of uh, instead of passing this value of uh, directly the probability p I know how to pass the probability uh, how to calculate the probability basically using the sigmoid function now one more thing interesting thing here is you must have seen it let me clear this first that your log function which is basically your l and uh, i can write it as log of m sorry okay let's do it this way just to make sure you understand the expression as well so my logs function l is basically given by a negative term here i will explain you why and whatever my expression was right from i to n and whatever my expression was there is a negative term here so remember i was telling you that i have to maximize this uh, maximize this log function right but instead by the convention and by just to be consistent what we do always is we try to minimize the loss function but here we were trying to maximize the log function so instead of doing that what we do is we introduce a negative term or we multiply with a negative term just so that we can say instead of maximizing the log function we are trying to minimize the loss function so this just it's a change in the terminologies so basically you are trying to not do the maximizing the mle you are basically equal to you are minimizing the loss function that is the only conventional difference that we'll see here okay so so far so good so we were able to come up with a loss function or you call it a cost function as so that we can make sure our linear model is be able to fit the data as best as it can but we have one more challenge one more challenge is this log function doesn't have an explicit explicit solution so we have to take a totally different approach or different tools in order to solve this uh, loss function that we will see in our subsequent video but for the time being what we were trying to tell you that how we can go from our OLS or a linear, linear model to logistic regression by introducing two interesting concepts. One is the sigmoid function and one is the Bernoulli distribution. By using these two techniques, we were able to convert a linear model into a logistic regression uh, model. So that now we can not only work with regression type of problems, we can also do classification type of problem. So I hope this gives you a very clear picture how logistic regression works and trust me we don't have to do all this mathematical implementation because some very nice people have implemented those in our scikit-learn library and we have to just use two lines of code to solve this kind of problem which we will eventually see while in the python code section in our subsequent video so thanks for watching and please do subscribe to our channel to support us and you have a nice day